It is a great privilege to be here. Anytime I have the opportunity or I'm opportune to speak to Nigerians, it is always something, I'm passionate about Nigeria. I believe that we are a country that is blessed. I believe that we're a country with great potential. I am proudly Nigerian. And I am hoping that by the time I give my very short talk, that I would have gotten a lot more people to my side. Because that is all Nigeria needs. Nigeria has no problems. Nigerians are the problem that Nigeria has. God has done his bit. Nigerians need to do their bit. That is why I'm wearing my Nigerian t-shirt today. I am so proudly Nigerian. Nigeria is a country... Maybe before I start, I should do something. Because there's something that we take for granted. Is there anybody here, please, who knows the second verse, stanza of the national anthem? Is there anybody who can sing it that has a better voice than me? Please. Could you please get up? And please, while we sing the anthem, because it's also going to form the basis for what I want to say, um, can we please rise and honor our country? The second stanza. It is a prayer. Who we'll go like this? One, two, three, go. Oh, God of creation, direct and noble cause, guide our leaders right, help I use the truth to know. In love and honesty to grow and live in just and truth. Great love to height attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Thank you very much. Um, two things come to mind when we sing the second stanza of the national anthem. The youths and the leadership. And the two go together. Young people are the driving force of any nation. They are the agents of change. They are the people with the energy to bring about a change in any society. The leaders are supposed to pilot that. Nigeria is a country, we hear it has over 150 million people. Lagos alone has over 18 million people, which means Lagos is bigger than some countries, some of our neighboring African countries. What that tells us is potential. That is what it means. It means that you can, we don't even need outsiders to create millionaires in this country. In Lagos alone, you can become a millionaire. If you can find something that you can do at one naira, I was in the punch today, I said this, and target one million people, you are a millionaire. You don't need to even live outside Lagos. And what you need is a vision. What you need is a dream. What you need is focus. When I hear people saying they want to travel abroad, I laugh. Because what they are looking for in Sokoto is actually in the Ashokoto. You can never go anywhere and be a citizen of that country. You can only be a citizen of the country called Nigeria. For as long as you have a name that is Dare, Nike, Ahmed, Yusuf, I remember that I was watching when they had the World Cup. There was an Amer there were, when America was playing, there were 11 people on the field. One person there was a Nigerian. I don't know if you people remember that. He didn't, no matter what jersey he's wearing, he's Nigerian. We were able to identify him. So the question now becomes, what is wrong with us as Nigerians? What are we not seeing? Nigeria 
the, the, all the airlines in this country, Emirates operates two flights a day, seven days a week. All the flights are full. Yes, we don't even have a national carrier. MTN has moved its headquarters. We are saying there's no light, too. MTN has moved its headquarters from South Africa to Nigeria without NEPA, and they are making money. The Oyimbos that they are kidnapping, they are kidnapping them, they are still coming. They are still here. Check the airline. Every day at the airports, there are more coming. What can they see that we as Nigerians cannot see? What have they discovered that we as Nigerians are yet to discover? There is a problem. And the problem is that we lack vision. Everybody, I believe that God places you where you're supposed to be. It is not a mistake that you're here. The band that we are singing and his praises today was in London for many years. I remember once I was in England, the band was performing in one small restaurant. The restaurant, he was performing. People were, they, they could not be bothered. He, couldn't, he didn't get his destiny until he came back to the shores of this country. Because this is where he was meant to be. How many of you know that Two-Face could not have been as big as he is if he had gone to America? He would not have met half of the stars abroad that he has met if he had gone there. You have to be where you are and find what you're supposed to be doing and to be celebrated. If you do not know what you're supposed to be doing, then the chances are that it will pass you by. So we come to it. How do I know who I am? How do I know why I'm here? How do I know what my purpose is? Every human being, God has created unique. And you have a USP, a unique selling point. There is something about you. Even twins are not alike. There is something about every individual that makes them unique. You have to find out what it is. God has blessed every individual with a talent. There is something that occurs and happens to you naturally. I'll use myself as the example. I went into University of Jos. I had... Four A's and three C's. My A's were in oral English, English language, and English literature. My C's were in physics, chemistry, biology, maths. At the time, in 1984, it was not fashionable to say you want to be an art student. Because I had C's in science, everybody thought, let her go and be a doctor or do something science-related. So I went into school. When I got into school, I got into school, I was admitted for chemistry. It was a struggle. At the end of first year, I had like four carryovers. I went back home. I told my mom, I said, this is not happening. No. We have to change. I don't like chemistry. The calculations are too much. There are too many for me. I can't keep track. She said, what do you, would you like to do? I said, well, we can still do something in the natural sciences. I moved to zoology. If you bring a live chicken into this hall, I'll take off. I cannot go near a cockroach. I cannot go near a rat. I cannot go near anything that moves. I have a dog in my house that I have never seen. I don't know the name of the dog. I don't like animals. And so, when it came to time for exams, they gave me a rat. They said I should dissect it. I'm very good at cramming. I just looked. I had looked at it. Look, I knew what inside the rat looked like. I knew all the labeling, everything. I just reproduced what was in my head. I didn't touch that rat. The lecturer called me. He said, your diagram is beautiful. Everything is correct. Where did you get it from? I said, it's in my head. I know what inside the rat looks like. He said, no, you can't do that. That, okay, because I've done so well, he's going to give me the opportunity to dissect it in his office. I told him, fail me. I can't dissect that rat. And so in that course, I had a let my peoples go degree. I could, I didn't really do well. And from there, I moved to botany. The plants were nicer. They don't move. They don't talk. They don't give you stress. 
I passed. I graduated with a degree in botany. Now, what was natural to me was the arts. And at the end of the day, after four years in school, what I am doing now is my passion. I didn't need to get an education to do this. This comes to me naturally. I didn't prepare for this. I was telling um, my PA there, Ada, that what am I even talking about? But I know that if I come up here, it will come to me. I don't, there are people who will stand here and they will be nervous and they will freeze. I don't like, I'm not a public person, but when I have to stand to talk about something I believe in, I don't need to think about it. It is natural to me. That is what God has blessed me with. I say to people, I can sell sand to somebody in the Sahara Desert and tell him that my own sand is different from the one that is around him and he will buy it. That is also natural to me. I can't be a vet. I can't be a doctor. If you, to give me an injection now, you have to catch me first. I'm 41. I cry. I'm not ashamed. There are things that as human beings, God has blessed you with. You have to discover your passion. When you discover that thing that you like doing, that even if nobody was paying you to do it, you would still be happy doing it. That is what your passion is. And there is nothing, let me repeat it, there is nothing on earth that cannot make you money. It is for you to see it. Until Alibaba decided that comedy was going to become a business. People were telling jokes for free. Now Alibaba stands and tells one joke, his money is counting. He collects 1.5. He led to a new generation of professions that is very lucrative. There is no profession. If you know of anything that anyone can do that will not earn you money, I'd like to hear it. It is the ability to see and take advantage of that situation. And because, like I said, Nigeria has the population to drive it, it becomes what exactly is my passion. I had, I did, um, I think I had, a, I had um, a recording where I was talking about how people can start business. And one guy, E600, who is now very, my very good friend, he does small chops, was telling his story. And he said something to me. He said when he started, he used to just like making food for his friends. He would fry puff, puff, he would do. And what gave him joy was looking at their faces when they ate it. It wasn't about the money. That when they are eating it, he would go and stand in a corner and be saying, let him see, do they like it? Don't they like it? Today, that is big time business for him. Your passion will always, always make a way for you. The second thing is that you have to be focused and you have to be ready to be able to see that opportunity when it comes. You, have to, you can be passionate about something and just use it and take it as a joke and not build yourself. I can like talking. If I will tell you something, anywhere I see in my car right now, there, I have something called word warp. What it does is that it, it engages my brain on forming words within a short time. If you give me crosswords, if you give me puzzles, scrabble, anything that involves English, I will jump at it. The reason why, I remember when I went, for, I went to um, some course with about, about 30 Americans. When I was talking, a lot of them asked me, did you school in England? Did you school in America? I said, no, I school in the University of Joss. It's in Plateau State. The reason being, I have taken time, because I know that this is something I love doing. I have taken time to build and develop myself in that which I love. What that means, you see people, you see presenters on TV today, and when they speak English, you take over. It does, it's, not, it's not even about going to school. It's about trying your best, and what you do in your spare time. How you develop that passion into a profession. That is what is important. Alibaba has a library. I went to Alibaba's library, I was shocked. He has over 5,000 comedy books. From everywhere in the world, 
then when I when he started, when I'm traveling, you say, I beg, if you enter any bookshop, if you see any book for comedy, I beg, let me buy them. And what he does is he reads them and he adapts them to suit the Nigerian audience. So when he gets up, Julius, all of them do it. You, you hear jokes and you think, oh, it must be so easy for them. They study for it. They don't take it for granted. Yes, they are funny. I can't crack it. If I tell you any one of their jokes, you won't even laugh. They take time to build that natural talent that God has given to them. There is nothing that you choose to do that even though you have been blessed with it, if you don't develop it, it will not do any good for you. Which is the reason why we go to school, the reason why we attend courses, seminars, trainings, and workshops. That is the reason. You have to be diligent about your passion. Don't just take it as a joke. You have to follow it. You have to discover it. You have to build it. I will tell you a story that I heard some time ago. Because I think it captures everything. Sometimes people talk about money. I heard this story and I was amazed. There's this woman... She had been working in a company for a very long time, but she was frustrated. She just wasn't happy. And so she decided, she kept telling her husband, look, I want to resign, I want to resign. The husband said, if you resign, what would you do? She said, I don't know, I just, I'm tired of this job. She had been there for 20 years. And so finally, because she was harassing her husband, her husband said, resign, let me have peace. So she resigned and she was sitting at home. One month, two months, she still didn't know what to do. She was very broke. So one day her sister-in-law came to her house. When he came to her house, he said to her, he said, um, the sister-in-law said, did you cook moi moi? She said, oh yes, I made moi moi. She said, please bring that your moi moi, legendary. So she was complaining to her sister-in-law that I don't know what to do. I don't even have money. I've been so broke. The sister-in-law said, eh, this is your moi moi. Why don't you just start cooking it? In fact, bring it to my office so that I can get my colleagues to buy it. You know your moi moi, anytime they have family party, they, they tell her to make the moi moi for the party. That is her job. Everybody knows her moi moi is legendary. So she said, eh, she said, ah, she doesn't have money. She said, how much do you have? She said, 1,000. He said, eh, how would that make you moi moi? Go on, start. She goes to the market and she buys stuff. She makes 20. She, the next day, to her sister-in-law's office. Her sister-in-law walks in the bank. Now, in one hour, she had sold out the moi moi. She had made 5,000 naira. Some of the people who came to the bank as, as guests, as visitors, now gave her their card. Please bring moi moi to my own office too. Let me not go through the long process because this story is incredible. But it just tells you that your passion, and it doesn't matter what it is, can make a way for you. Now, by the end of the week... Moi Moi to four offices and she was making very serious she was now I mean turning over her money at the end of two months she had made a hundred thousand from selling Moi Moi that she started with one thousand naira she now she's looking at the newspapers because she wants to expand her business she has employed people to go and help her be distributing Moi Moi to offices she now sees some training for people starting a small business. Some Americans were coming, especially for women. That if you want to start your small business, you need to know how to um, do your books and all that. Come and attend this course. And that at the end of the course, one female was going to be given starting up capital to establish their business. So she, she registered for it. It was free. And she went. She listened and everything. Then she went to one of the organizers and said to them that, please, I'd like a one-on-one -on -one meeting with that woman who brought everybody. I need to ask some questions. The woman now said, they said they'll try and see if she has the time. Luckily, the American who was in charge of the delegation was able to see her. So she started narrating her story to the woman that, look, oh, by this time, her business had boomed. She was making good money. And it was only more money she was doing. The woman now listened to her story. The woman said, you started your business with how much? She said, 1,000 naira. The woman said, could you convert that to dollars? And she said, you said you're making how much now? The woman said, she said, you should be lecturing us. We shouldn't be lecturing you. 
that that is incredible. In fact, what I want you to do now is I want you to talk to all these women here. She said, eh. Uh-huh. They said, yes. This is how to start a business. This is what we're talking about. So they called her up. She talked to all the women. When she finished, she got a stand innovation. She was shocked. The woman, they were, the woman, and she, of course, won that award and, was, and got the startup capital to start her own business. That is not the end of the story. Three months an email from those people in America. We want to invite you to London to come and talk to the women. We're doing the same thing we did in Nigeria in London. We want you to come and talk to the women about how to start and manage their business. Your, she said, ha, London. She has never been abroad before. Moi, moi, mushi. To go and talk to the women in London. How come? They told her they want her to come. That she has an inspirational story. That they were going to send all the details to the embassy and she should just go. She went to the embassy. They rejected her. She was so disappointed because she was already talking about it. And oh God. Now, they apologized to her from America that, you know, this is not their country. The British people have their own way. So they are sorry. They didn't give her the visa. But they will still be in touch. Three months later, she got another email. We are doing the same thing in America. Now, this is our own country. We are sending all the details. You are going to travel first class, all expenses paid. You are coming to America to come and tell us how to start business. She said, eh? She first of all thought it was 419. Lo and behold, they got in touch with her here. She went to the embassy. No brand new passport. They didn't ask her any questions. They looked at everything. They gave her three months visa. She went to America. She said she finished talking. All the American women, big, big women, they were clapping for her. She said, Amy, moi, moi, sell her from Mushi. Addressing Americans and they are clapping for me. This is a woman who had been a secretary in an office for 20 years. Nobody knew her. Nobody. Just in case you think this story is finished, it's not. She came back to Nigeria. She was very happy. She, was, she had made a lot of contacts and all that. About six months later after that, she got an email that they would like to invite her to America again, but courtesy of the Clinton signed the letter. She thought, these 419 people have started the game. Me, how can Bill Clinton know me to write me a letter? She didn't reply. The, Ameri- the American lady now got in touch with her. That Did she get a letter from ex-president Bill Clinton? She said, ah, she saw it too. But how can she believe that Bill Clinton will know her? She said, no. What happened was when you came to give that talk the last time, there was somebody from the Clinton Foundation who was in the audience listening. And he went back and he told President Bill Clinton that there is a woman from Nigeria that our women need to talk to, need to hear. And so they are inviting her for the Clinton Foundation Women Empowerment Program. So when they told her that, she said, so you mean Bill Clinton really is the one that sent the letters? They told her, yes. Again, back to the embassy. This time, they gave her two years. The letter is from President Bill Clinton. There's no need now. She went to America. She got to America. She said the hall was huge. So many people. She went to sit at the back. That, is this where they want her to come and talk? She said, over 5,000 people. What does she know? Mushi, Moi Moi Sela, Nigeria, Lagos, Mushi. What does she know that she wants to tell all these big women that have come here? Somebody, one of the ushers came to meet her and asked her that, is she this person? She said, yes. She said, oh, President Bill Clinton would like you to come right in front. She said, Tani. They said, President Bill Clinton would like you to come to the front. She said, okay. She followed them. They carried her bag. She followed them. That she saw Bill Clinton, she almost... They told her to sit next to him. She was, she said she couldn't even talk. When it was time for her to speak, as it was time, they told her she should please hold on. They're expecting their special guest of honor. She was now like, who can be more than President Bill Clinton that is sitting next to her? Guess who strolls in? Barack Obama. He was the special guest of honor for the Clinton Foundation Women Empowerment Program. And so this woman delivered a talk with two American presidents sitting and listening to her. 
It was not anything that she got an education for. It was not anything that she was trained for. It was her passion that took her to where she was. And so the reason why I tell you this story is that there is something that God has already put in you. There is something that you already have that you, you need to discover. Nobody can do it for you. You need to search yourself. There are a lot of people who are doing things that they would rather be doing. And they are afraid to take that step. And if you do not take that step, if you keep believing and moaning and complaining about everything that is wrong, there's a lot wrong, there's no doubt. But if you are going to keep complaining about what is wrong, you would never see the opportunities that are available. I can say, everybody tells me, you know, if you were in, if you were in um, America, you'd have made money. If I was in America, I don't know what I'll be talking about. If I go anywhere else, what would I be talking about? When my friend came to me and said, won't you do the Amer green lottery, visa lottery? I said, to go and do what? They call us developing nations. To me, it's not an insult, actually. When they say developing, it means something that is developing has room for growth. A developed nation has reached its peak. So if you are a developing nation, it means you still have a lot of potential. And so what are you doing? Are we letting other people come and use the potential that is available in our land? What is happening? Um, and Indians have taken over all the companies in this country. And we have 150 people. Our companies are run by Chinese and Indians. Country that we are saying that every day they are bringing more. Tata, their cheap car there is now here. With, they've made it now. They've put the uh, 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 AC inside Tata, Keke Marua, and they are selling it to us and we are buying. We need to ask ourselves questions. We need to tell ourselves the truth. This is a blessed land. You need to find your place. There's something you are supposed to be grabbing that you are not grabbing. There's something that is there out there waiting for you that you have not seen. And that is because you have not positioned yourself to see. Money. People, the first thing most people tell you is we don't have money. It is not money you need. It is the vision you need. The vision will bring you the money. And when you start something and people see how passionate you are about it, people would hook onto your plan. Channels TV was on air for more than seven years without one TV commercial. Not, but he believed that this can work. We can have a 24-hour news station that doesn't show musicals and drama and everything. And he kept at it. Today, if you want to put your advert in Channels News at 10, you come with a check. The only people. If you can't, don't bring your check. They blacklist advertisers. They say to people, we don't want your advert. If you don't have your money with you, don't bring it. They are oversubscribed. It is patience. It is diligence. It is hard work. It is focus. Papa Jasko, super story. All of us, we started, when we started Inside Out, I remember we used to go and meet Dr. Wesley. He was the one who gave us the opportunity to put our program on. Because in Nigeria, you pay a TV station. And we didn't have money to pay. In fact, he had used all the money that he had from his wife's school, to shoot Papa Jasko. Adverts were not coming for a very long time. Today, if you want to do anything with Wale Adenuga, you bring money when you're coming. Super Story is number one. He has more than eight programs on air. When people see you now, they say, oh, that man, he has money. Nobody knows where you're coming from. And that you have paid your dues. A lot of people in Nigeria today are not ready to go through the process. There's nobody that, except you are a thief, which is where most of our leaders fall into right now. Except you are a thief, it is diligence and persistence and hard work that brings money. And that is the money that we recognize. We have lost a lot of our values, but there are still a few people who are credible. If we want Nigeria to change, we have to change. We have to learn to do the right thing. We have to learn 
that there is a process to doing anything and achieving anything in life. Nothing, nothing, nothing comes easy. Nothing good comes easy. We are complaining about our leaders. We are complaining that, oh, they are chopping our money. Then you ask yourself, what about me? We're talking about leadership corruption. What about the everyday corruption we see? You are a civil servant. You go to a, you go into an, a civil servant's office to sign a document. He wants you to pay for buy. He wants you to pay for fuel for the file to move from one table to another table. Are you diligent in that one that you are doing? The policeman on the street must collect 20 naira. You are inside a downfall bus as a Nigerian. Hundred, it has become 100 now. But you see, you are just as guilty. You are inside a bus. You know that the downfall man has not done anything wrong. And police stops him. The bus is full of all of us. And the man is refusing to give the policeman 100 naira. All of you will start shouting. Give him. You know what he wants. That's Nigeria for you. We are all guilty. We are all just as guilty. And no nation can grow like that. We don't stand up for anything, yet we want everything to change. How is it going to change? Who are we fooling? Who are we fooling? There was a downfall that took one way and faced me. And so I decided to face him back. I put my car in front of him. Guess what happened? Then Ghostly was building up. The man was trying to go to the corner so that he could pass. When he tries to move this way, I block him. He moves this way, I block him. All the passengers, frustrated woman. You will not let the man go. Maybe your husband has annoyed you this morning. I am the one who is doing the right thing, no? Everybody, the downfall man, everybody in the bus was abusing me. Now, that is not bad enough. The people behind me, madam, just let him go. Ah, uh -uh, what is wrong with you? You are causing go slow. The people behind me, oh. So I am alone in my fight. Everybody else abusing me. I am on my lane. And we say we want Nigeria to get better. How is it going to get better? As a leader in your own small field and in your own small fair, what do you do? Every day we see examples of people doing wrong and it has become the norm. How will anything work? If we were a people that knew that even as a human being, I can stand up and talk to anybody because I know that I don't have skeletons. There's nobody who can say they paid me to get me to where I am. Or they gave, I, I gave them money to get to where I am. I get a lot of flack for it. But it is what I believe. I, if you say you are passionate about your country, you must show. I travel abroad and they tell me, are you good Nigerian or bad Nigerian? I say, are you good American or bad American? Are you good South African or bad South African? I have friends. I have lived in Nigeria all my life. I have never done anything fraudulent. In your country too, you have good and bad. There are a lot of good people in this country. It is only the bad that is being celebrated. And if we're going to turn things around and make things better and make things work, it has to start with each and every one of us. We have to make the difference. We have to become more enterprising. We have to stop looking for short corners. I was on my program. Somebody said a mother paid for her daughter to pass nursery school exam. Nursery school. What is that child going to become? Let's not talk about the rubbish that is happening with the universities and the secondary schools. Where a student comes and tells the teacher that he's, he's, he's a shume because they don't want to read. And they say, Nitoba more way, no more way. What does that mean? So somebody graduates from university as a medical doctor who didn't read one book and he's going to go and treat people. How is that going to help our healthcare? A teacher that cannot speak English and cannot write English is an English teacher. What is he going to teach the children? Your children. Nigeria is a land of potential. Nigeria is a land of opportunity. God has done his bit. Let all of us as Nigerians do our bit. There is nothing that you are looking for that you cannot get in this country. 
to make matters even better for us, we do not have natural disasters. We don't have any... The, prob, the only problem Nigeria has is Nigerians. Nigerians are the greatest problem Nigeria has. And so it is important. We have young people now that are so lazy, so laid back, wants fast, 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 everything fast. Politicians are coming, they use you. They give you 5,000 naira, you go and vote. You sell four years of your life, eight years, because nobody stays for four years. You sell eight years of your life to a bad man for 5,000 naira. And you are not thinking about it. I remember they were saying, Ghani said that when he told one old woman to vote for him, the woman said, but this is not what we want to hear. How much did you bring? And then when they get there, you complain. When you are the one who puts them there. It is you they use as the thugs. Because they sit down in their houses. Their children are abroad. Your universities are shut down. The doctors are on strike. They use you to cause chaos that affects you. And then you turn around and you complain. What did you expect? What did you expect? I'm just going to end by saying, because I believe that, like I said, my hope is that at the end of this, I would have brought a lot more people to my side. Nigeria is a blessed country. Nigerians are a blessed people. We are a great nation. I'm not saying it the way they said the great nation. No, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. We are great people. Nigerians are the only ones that I know that are really their brother's keeper. It is, forget the Koya and the VI people, though. They're not the ones I'm talking about. Those are not the Nigerians. If for any reason, I, had, I, I, I always like to use stories. I was in England. The neighbor for my brother's house then had been dead for two weeks. An old woman. She had been dead for two weeks. Nobody knew until the ambulance service came. I think the social worker tried to enter and they didn't find them. They couldn't, she didn't open the door. She had been dead and swollen two weeks. Nobody knew. Can you imagine in Nigeria that your neighbor does not open their door for one day and nobody will know? It's not possible. How many of you watched Osofia in London? You remember when Osofia went to buy bread? He told the man, he said, my house is down the road. I will go and bring money. And I will come and pay you. The Oyibo man told him, and that is how they are. No, you can't. I will call police. Or Sophia told him, on top bread. A lot of you took that for granted. Where we come from, that's what we do. The woman who sells the bread is not a rich woman. She's a Nigerian. She's a person with a heart. If she even has people around her who don't have jobs, they eat on credit. You can do almost anything. We see all these things and we take it for granted because it is here with us. We do not recognize the goodness in us. A man collapsed in Ketu. When he, they revived him, they said, what is wrong? He said, I am hungry. I've been trekking from Maryland. And I need to get to mile 12 before I can enter bus. The people who rescued that man, the woman who sends bones, gave him bones. The woman who sells pure water, gave him pure water. The one who sells bread gave him bread. People started to donate 50, 50 naira. When that man was living there, he left there with 10,000, food in his stomach, food in his hand. They were not rich people. They were Nigerians. That's what they were. Because those are the Nigerians I know. For those who are older here, if you look, if you recall, we don't lock our houses. We never used to lock our houses. You tell your neighbor, eh, this person is in the house, please help me check. We didn't even have fences. My house in Kano, GRE, number one Kangao Road, flowers were our fence. Flowers were our fence because that is the Nigeria I know. That is the Nigerian I know. If you still in the village, nobody will marry for your, from your family for the years to come. For that one person who stole, they'll say that family, they are thieves. Stealing is not in our culture. 
Corruption is not in our culture. These are all new things. And we need to change it back. Because until we change it back, we can't get the Nigeria we're looking for. Where potential and passion can make a decent living for you. We need to stand up for what we believe in. We need to go after what we believe. And so that we can make Nigeria the Nigeria of our dreams. Where we can all, where we can all grow. And our children yet unborn. Because whatever we live now is our children that will suffer. If you see things going wrong and you don't write it, forget it. It's your children that will come out. I, I say to all the rich men, it is the poor people's children that will steal all their children's money. Because it, it only follows that whatever you leave to go bad can only get rotten. And when it gets rotten, total and utter chaos. And we have a group of children who are coming now who cannot even identify the Nigeria some of us knew growing up. My ticket when I was in University of Jos was 60 Naira. I was doing an independence anniversary special. The man told me that to go to London was 300 To London as Nigerians. They, they actually have cars waiting for them. When they were in university in their days, that they used to give them bed sheets, pillowcases, tissue paper, bursary. It's true, isn't it? For those who know. This is the same Nigeria we're talking about. And we're still the same blessed nation. So, please, let us take on the cause. Let us work hard and know that anything is possible in this great land called Nigeria. Let us rebuild and let us make it the country of our dreams. Thank you very much.